Hi everyone, Jason here to talk to you about how we set up our files in InDesign and Illustrator when a client or printer provides us with die lines. This particular file that was sent to me by the client, I'm working on a couple different projects and one of them is a brochure. And they have provided me a quick little PDF of what the die lines look like, as well as the sizes of the die lines too, just for my reference, which is quite handy. So I'm working on a folder, and this folder folds down to basically four and a half by eight, which means it's nine inches by eight inches when it's laid out like this. We're also going to have a die cut for a card and they provided me the front and the back of the card die line as well. And so I need to lay out this folder and I need to take the die line that they have provided for me. I'm going to create an InDesign file and put this die line into that InDesign file so that I can begin to design and build my file based on the die line. With this card that they provided me as well, They've given me the dimensions for this. Slightly odd size, it's three and three eighths by two and an eighth, but they've provided me the die line of the front and the back, as well as the magnetic strip that's going to go on the back. And they've also given me a die line for a table tent as well, which is gonna be folded in half and then die cut. And so I'm gonna build my file on those faces. And they also want an eight ounce coffee cup, which they have provided me a picture of this die line as well. So we're gonna walk through all these different steps on how you would go and take these die lines, set up your files, in what application to build these actual files out. So I'm gonna go into the file menu and choose new, and I'm gonna set this up to be nine inches by eight inches, and click okay. And here's my file. Now I'd like to bring in my die line for my folder. So they have provided me die lines in two different forms. Some of them are in an Illustrator file and some of them are in a PDF, which is completely fine because Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Acrobat basically have the same kind of engines. So you can read a PDF or open a PDF up in Illustrator, but you can also directly save an Illustrator file into a PDF. So they're very nicely compatible. So whether it's an Illustrator file or a PDF, should be fine in terms of a die line. I'm going to place this folder die line by going into the file menu here in InDesign and choosing place, which is going to be command D. I'm gonna to navigate to where my folder die line is and select this die line and click open. I get my loaded cursor. Now one very important thing when you're placing your die lines is you want to make sure you place your die lines at the correct size. Remember, die lines are there for you to lay out your content based on where the printer is going to fold and cut and trim. Now, if you don't place your die line correctly at 100% of actual size, you will then build a file that is not the same size as the actual die cut from the printer, and you will have to redo your entire file. So when you get your loaded cursor, do not click and drag and place this file. Simply click. The file will come in at 100% of actual size, which is exactly what you want to have. If this is larger or smaller, and we'll talk about how we can see what the size of our file is, if it's larger or smaller, this will pose a real problem. Now, when I bring in Illustrator or PDF files, one of the things that you know by now is that the preview isn't very good. So, as it is with InDesign, the typical preview or the standard preview that comes in with InDesign will always render Illustrator files and PDFs, making it look like they're a little bit chunky, which is low resolution. Not a problem. I'm going to go into the View menu, Display Performance, and I'm going to set this to High Quality Display, which will then render my placed artwork in a nice, clean look. And I'm going to move my window so that my die line is going to match the size of my page. Now remember, they told me that this flat piece is going to be nine by eight, 
So it's going to be 9 inches wide, 8 inches high, and it's going to then fold into 4.5 inches wide by 9 inches high. Do I set it up to each 4.5 inch panel? Absolutely not. I'm going to set it up as a single piece of paper because then it's going to fold in half and the overall piece of paper will be 9 by 8 inches. Now once I set my preview to a high quality display, I want to go in and I want to put my die line so it matches the edge of my paper. And so I move it where I think this should be by putting the die line right to the very edge. However, when I go to the right hand side here, it looks like my die line is sticking out from the edge. Well, this die line, normally when they're built, the die line is built to a one point line. So in all actuality, what you want to do is you want to go and you want to put your die line so that it's directly centered on the very edge of the page. Now remember, the die line isn't here really for the printer. The printer has used the die line to make the die cutter. And the die line is there for you when you're laying this out so that you know where the folds, where the trims, where the scores, and where the knockouts are for your layout. So I'm going to put my die line so that it sits very nicely in the middle of the edge of my page. And if I go to each corner of my page here, I will see that the die line very nicely falls right in the middle of that edge. Now, when I'm building a file and I'm using a die line, I always use my layers panel. So if you don't have your layers panel open, go under the Windows menu and call up your layers. Now when I have placed this file into this document, I've got no other content in the document, there's only one layer and it's been placed on layer one. I'm going to double click on layer one so I can rename this and I'm going to call this my die line. And you can change the color of the bounding box of the layer here if you'd like. So I'm going to turn it to red because die lines are usually made in magenta. And if you'd like to choose magenta, you certainly can. Red is right there at the top. I'm going to choose red. Now I'm going to lock this layer. And the reason why is because I do not want to build any content or place anything on the same layer that the die line is. And you'll see why. Because when I go to output this, I may not want to print the die line. And it's very easy for me to simply turn off the die line layer. And all it does is turn off the die line and doesn't turn off any of my content I've put in here. Now I've laid out my document. Now this is only one side of the folder. And depending on what you have discussed with a client here, this is a folder that is going to have a front and a back, and of course an inside left and an inside right. Why? Because when you fold this in half, you're going to get basically four different panels. Well, this little card that they have provided me is going to then fit into these little tabs here. And after discussing this with your client, is that card going to go on the front of your folder, or is it going to go in the inside panel? Who knows? Depending on how you lay this out and what they want, then you're going to use this document to go ahead and lay out your layout to match this. Now remember, this is only one side of your printed piece. If you were to take this and cut this out at this size and fold it in half, you're going to have an outside, basically a front and a back panel, and an inside left and an inside right. So how do we then go in and get the other side, okay, whether it be the front and back or the inside left and right, we do this very easily. And we're going to go under the window menu under our pages panel. And the easiest way to go in and duplicate what we've done here is go to your pages panel. We only have one page in here. I'm going to right click or control click on that one page icon and I'm going to choose duplicate spread. By duplicating the spread, this will give me the exact same item, but on page number two. And now with this, I've got two pages and I can see here that I have, whether this be the back and the front or the inside and the outside, depending on how you've laid this out with your client. Now, obviously <clears throat> one of these needs to be flipped over because if I were to cut this out and fold this, then these cutouts here would be on the other side. So I'm going to go back to my layers panel and I'm going to unlock my layer and I'm going to select my die line and going up either into my control bar. If you don't have your control bar, you can go into the window menu and call up control or you can call up your properties panel. And with these 
properties panel or the control bar by selecting your image container that contains the die line. You can flip this horizontally so that it flips over on itself. Now remember you have to go and line this up and I'm just selecting this with my selection tool and then I'm just using my right arrow to kind of move it into position. Zoom in on it and make sure that my die line fits perfectly so the die line straddles the edge of my page just like it should be. Now I'm going to lock that die line again and I really don't need to go in and touch this die line ever again. So now what I have is I have both sides of my folder. Whether this is the inside left and right or the front and back, I know that I have the layout here and I know exactly where the card is going to fit in and where my fold is. All good. Now I'm going to begin to build my file. However, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to create a new layer. So in the Layers panel, I go to the bottom and click on the plus. There's my new layer and name it something that makes sense. I'm going to call this my artwork. And maybe you want to go in and you want to put your artwork on a layer or your imagery on a layer and your type on another layer. No problem. But nothing is going to go on the die line layer. That is going to be locked and protected and not touched again. Now if I were to build my artwork and I have my artwork layer selected, you'll notice that any containers that I draw for text or images will now reflect the color of my bounding box to match the color of my layer. So I build all my content in here like this. Now, one thing that I didn't set up on here is a bleed. And why do I need a bleed? Well, I may be going in on my artwork layer and I may be applying a color to the entire background here. And I can't just run my color to the very edge of my image or the very edge of my page here. Because if I do that, then when I trim this out and they die cut it, I may not get that print right to the very edge. And when they trim this off, they may show a little sliver of the color of the paper. So I need to make sure I set up a bleed. Well, I could have set up the bleed when I began and set up my document, but I didn't think of it. No problem. Let's go back into the file menu, go under my document setup, and I'm going to click on the bleed and slug drop down menu and open this up. And I'm going to apply a bleed here, which typically is 1 8 of an inch, which is 0.125. And I click OK. The bleed does not change the size of the document. The bleed simply adds a set of guides that extend an eighth of an inch beyond the edge of the document. And if I zoom in here, I can see that I have the edge of my document, which is clearly where I place my die line. And then I have a secondary set of guides here, which is my bleed. If I were to go in and I were to do, say, a bar of color in here, and I were to apply this bar of color right here, if it touches the edge, it has to bleed off, which means it has to go all the way to the edge of the bleed. Now, if you don't set up the bleed in your document setup, then you end up just pulling this to any random sizes beyond there. You may pull too far, which isn't a problem, but you may not pull that far enough. So the rule of the bleed is anything that touches the edge must bleed off if you are doing a document that is a bleed. So in this case, I know I'm going to trim this down to 9 by 8. So any imagery, any color, anything that touches the edge must bleed off. So I automatically set that up in my document. Now, why do we go in and put our die line on its own separate layer? Well, one of the things is, is that when we go to finally print this, we don't want to print the die line. The die line is given to us by the printer because that is what they made their actual physical metal die cutter out of. But we need to know where this content is. So they give us the die line. So like when they put my card in the final file here, I may not want to have any content behind here. Or I may, when they remove the card, they see some message behind the card. But I need to know that. However, when I go to print this file or send the PDF, I can just simply turn off that entire layer and make a PDF out of this or print this file and I don't see the die line. So always put the die line on its own separate layer and never build any artwork on that layer itself.
Now the next component we have is the little card that's going to go in here. Now remember, the client came over and gave me this die line here, and they gave me the front and the back of the card. And so it's got rounded corners, and it's got the little magnetic stripe. And they were also nice enough to provide me the size of this card. So I'm going to go into my InDesign file, and I'm going to create a new document here. And they happen to tell me that the size of the card is 3.375, which is 3 and 3 eighths of an inch. And the height is 2.125, which is 2 and an eighth. Now, I'm going to keep the number of pages at 1 right here because that's going to be the front of the card. You know, maybe I want to have the back of the card too. So sure, maybe I'll go in and put two pages here because obviously we need to set up the file to provide artwork for the front of the card and the back of the card. I click Create. Here's my file. Now looking at this, I have my margins that are inside here. And the margins are always set up to be a half an inch. And the margin is basically the live or the safe area. And typically everything inside the margins is a half an inch. And I think this is a little bit extreme. If you want to go in and you want to edit your margins so that you don't have this half inch space between the edge and your printed content, you have to go under the layout menu in order to edit your margins and columns. So layout, margins and columns. I'm going to go and I'm going to edit my margins and columns basically down to say a quarter of an inch. That's going to be a whole lot better. Now you can also do the same thing in your properties panel as well. You can change the size and the orientation and your margins right here in the properties panel too. Layout menu works just as well. So here's my document. Now here's the trick with this particular die line that the client has sent me. I'm going to go into the file place, which is Command or Control D, and I'm going to bring in the actual card die line. I select the Illustrator file, I click Open, and it gives me a preview. And what they've built is they've built the front and the back of the card in the same file. So again, I don't click and drag because I may have the card completely the wrong size, so I don't want to click and drag. I want to take my loaded cursor and I simply want to click. And this guarantees me that I am placing this file at 100% size. And you can see that the preview isn't very good. So I'm going to go back under the View menu, set my display performance to high quality display so that those die lines render exactly the way they're supposed to. And I'm going to move my die lines into place. And I can't round the edges of my page here. So I'm just going to move my die line into place. And I'm just using my up and down arrows, left and right arrows on the keyboard here to kind of nudge this instead of using my cursor or my mouse because it, sometimes it just works a little bit easier when I nudge them by using the left and right arrows here. And I'm going to get that again so that die line very nicely straddles the edge of my page beautifully. Okay. When I do this, I notice that I have my document laid out here. But I also have this image container that has contains both the front and the back of my file. Well, this is just an image container because I'm just importing an image. A die line is simply an image that's made in Illustrator. Well, I don't want to see this other back of the card sitting over here. I'm going to take my selection tool and I'm just going to simply close up my image container like I can do with any image container because this is just an image like everything else. Now, once I've done that, the front of my card is where it should be. I'm going to go to my second page. Go to my Pages panel, double click on the second page here. Again, go onto my File menu and choose Place. I'm going to import the exact same die line again. I'm going to click, so it brings it in actual size. Zoom out a little bit so you can see this. I'm just using my Command or Control minus to zoom out. And I don't want both cards sitting in my file. It's messy. So just like every other image container, I'm simply going to close up that image container so I get the other side of my file. Remember, this is all built in one file, but I'm just going to close up the window, close up the container, so that I get the front that goes in the front or the first page here, and the back and I'm going to just use my up, down, left, right arrows to nudge this into position and make sure that that creates a nice 
die line pretty much right here where it straddles the edge of my page. Wonderful. Don't worry about these little corners. I can't create a page with rounded corners. This is what the die line is for. Okay. Now remember the rule is go into your layers panel, double click on the layer that everything was imported on. I'm going to call this my die line. I always like to change it to the color red or magenta because that's the color of the die line and I click OK. Then I'm going to create a new layer and of course this is going to be my artwork so that when I build my artwork I do not build anything on the die line. Now something unique about this card. This is the front of my card and the client has told me that they wanted to have two colors on the front of the card so I'm going to use two spot colors. However, on the back of the card, they specifically told me they only want to have one color. Now, what is these? what are these slashes going through here? Well, this is basically a non-print area. This is where I cannot put any artwork, any color. I can put anything in here. Nothing. No fill, no stroke, no nothing. Can't even think about it. So if I am going to put color in this document here, I want to make sure that, of course, I'm on my artwork layer. And when I, if I were to put color in here, I would make sure that whatever color I put in here, no matter what it is, does not go beyond that edge of that bar. Because that bar is going to be a special magnetic strip, spectral magnetic ink, and we need to print it directly on our object and not over any other color. So when you see these kind of stripes, that means it's off limits to absolutely everything. Everything. Now, as we do this, I also forgot, whoops, I forgot to set up my bleed when I created my new document here. Again, if I'm going to create anything that has color that is going to cover the entire card here, I need a bleed. So I go back under my file menu, under my document setup, and again, I make sure I put my bleed in there. Standard bleed is an eighth of an inch, 0.125 of an inch, unless you are told otherwise. A bleed does not change the size of the document. Document size stays the same. The bleed extends beyond. So if I were going to go ahead and I were going to do a full color card on the front, I would then go in and take my container and I would on a new layer, other than the die line, never put anything on the die line, absolutely not. Then I can go in and I can fill that with my color of whatever it may be. And it's then going to go to the very edge. Now you'll notice that it's like, oh, you know what? When I put my content in here, I can't see my die line. Not a problem. You know why? Because the die line layer is below the artwork layer. But I'm going to lock my die line layer so I don't accidentally put anything on there. And I can move my die line up above so I can see where my artwork is and my die line on top of that as well. So if I were going in and I were doing a blue background as well here, obviously if the die line layer were behind, I wouldn't see my die line. But if I'm going to do a blue flood on the back of it, and a flood is just a continuous realm of color here, I can then go in on my artwork layer, having the die line layer on top but locked, because I do not want to put anything in my die line, Remember, I want to turn my die line off. When I print this, I don't want to see the die line when I print this. I just want to see the artwork. So now when I put this in, again, if anything touches the edge of the document, it must bleed off. I need to set up the bleed myself. Bleed doesn't happen magically. So now I've set up my card. I've got the front and the back. Why do I set up on, them up on two different pages? because we literally print one side and the other side. What you don't want to do is this. You don't want to go in and just create a really big file like this, say 11 by 17, go into the file menu and choose place, place your die line, and then do something like this. And then build your artwork inside here. The problem with this is, is that when you go to print this, your crop marks have to be at the edge of your document. Well, because this is 11 by 17, because I just set up a big page, my crop marks are going to be out here. You send this into a printer, and the printer is going to be like, you know what, you got to set up this file better. I need a front page and a back page, the size of the card, with crop marks, with bleed, 
with all of the other printer marks. So don't ever set up a file this way. You want to make sure that your file size is always set up to your final trimmed end size of your end product. In this case, this card is 3.375 by 2.125. So when I set up this file here, if I go under File, Document, Setup, that is exactly the size I set it to. Any other size would be incorrect. Now when I print this or export this as a PDF, my crop marks will appear exactly at this size here. And my crop marks will appear right here, exactly where this needs to be trimmed. So I've set it all up just fine. Now my table tents is a little bit more interesting because it's kind of a long page, but not a problem at all. My client gave me a table tent die line that was 4.25 inches wide and kind of an odd size at 18.55 inches high. Well, I only need one page here because I don't print anything inside the table tent. So I create my file. It's a very tall and narrow file here. Again, go on to the file menu and choose place, which is command or control D. I select my table tent die line and I click open and I simply click and there is my table tent die line and I move it into position and make sure I park it right there at the very edge. And again, set my layer so that I call it the die line and make sure that I keep everything consistent. I'm just gonna turn the layer red and lock it new layer, call this my artwork, so that I never put anything on the die line layer. There it is, click OK. Now I'm ready to lay out my entire content. Yet again, I've forgotten my bleed. Go into the file menu, document setup, put in my bleed, all good, I've got my bleed. Now the last thing that they provided me when they sent me over this PDF was this coffee cup. And this coffee cup has a curve, and this particular coffee cup, well, I noticed that when they sent me over the files here, they sent me over the files, and the coffee cup was a PDF. Don't worry about it, because I'm going to go over to Illustrator, and in Illustrator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under File Open, and I'm going to open that PDF, which is a die line, click OK, and it opens this PDF in Illustrator, because this is where it was generated to begin with. Now it does have some other funky layers, okay? Here's the, you know, the die line right here, which I'm gonna lock, because look, they provided me with an artwork layer. Now remember, if the die line's on top, all your artwork's gonna be behind. So here's a really interesting thing with my cup artwork here. It's a slightly different die line than I was used to when I was laying out things in InDesign. And here's the reason why. When I lay out my content in InDesign here, I would go in with my folder, I would set up my entire page size, and I would put a bleed in InDesign that I can then take any content that would touch the edge, image, line, graphic, color, I bleed off an eighth of an inch. Well, what's interesting here with a cup, I have a very different looking die line, and what's going on with this? Well, cups are a slightly different thing than a die cut folder, or a card, or a table tent. And the reason why we see a different die line here is because this red area, or this magenta solid area here, is our actual artwork area. The top, bottom, left, and right are areas where, at the top here, this is where they curl the top of the cup over, so you get that nice curled edge, so when your lips meet it, you're not right up against sharp paper, but it also creates that curled edge for the lid to snap onto. And you don't want to print someplace where you're going to have contact with your lips so they don't print that because ink, different types of ink, different types of paper could crack and you don't want that coming off. Now the bottom here is where they actually glue the bottom into the cup. And in many cases, you don't want to glue onto something that is printed. And then when the cup wraps around here, you need to go in and you need to set this up so that you don't want to print here because when it glues together, you don't want to glue on something that's printed. So these dashed lines are the actual size that they're going to cut out, but the solid lines inside here are going to be where you actually build your artwork. Now, I didn't worry about setting up my artboard here being the size of my cup 
because this is going to be die cut. This isn't a square or a rectangle here. So setting up my artboard here to the actual size of the cup, top, bottom, left, and right, really doesn't have anything to do with a cup. They're going to take the die cutter, which is just acts like a cookie cutter, and cut out the paper. And they're going to make sure that all of your artwork stays within this live area. And then they're going to trim right out here, roll the top, glue and crease the bottom, overlap the sides, and glue those together. But just like my documents in InDesign, I need to make sure I have my artwork layer because I never will build anything on my die line layer. Now, when it comes to printing this, if I were to go in and print this and I did not want my die line to print, it's as simple as going in and just turning off the die line layer. That's it. If the layer is turned off, it won't pay attention to it. So if I have built my content in here and put anything into these files and I'd like to print them, I can simply go to my die line layer, turn off the die line and hit print, and I will be able to go ahead and print this without that die line, which is one of the reasons why we put the die line on its own separate layer. So this was just the layout aspect of dealing with die lines. So we have single die lines, we have die lines like this card where we have a front and a back, and the folder here where we have the front and the back. Here it's basically the same, but we need to know where this die line falls. So when we lay this out, does the card go here or here? Does it cover up content? In terms of this card here, we talked about the front and the back and not printing anything in the striped area whatsoever. Again, two different pages here in InDesign because we have two different sides. Don't ever lay it out in one page and have these separated. Printer is not going to like that. When it comes to our table tent, lay it out just like we did with the folder. The table tent is only going to be printing on one side. So I don't have to worry about two pages because I'm just going to put my artwork in here, keeping in mind that when you do this, one of these sides will be laid out right side up, the other one upside down because what happens when you form a table tent and you fold it in half, one side is upside, one side is downside. When it's flat, but when it's all folded, then both read correctly. Keep that in mind. Jumping over to Illustrator, it doesn't matter what size your artboard is because we're not trimming to the size of the artboard like we were in the folder. Here, the die line simply exists and they gave me an artboard to work with, so the size of the artboard really isn't relevant. What is really relevant is making sure that your die lines are on their own layer. You built everything in a separate artwork so you can turn off those die line layers. And that's a really quick tutorial on how to go in and lay out content that was given to you from an Illustrator file or an Acrobat PDF in terms of die lines. So how do we know if the die line has actually been laid out at 100% of actual size? Well, so how do we know if our die line has actually been laid out in our file at 100% size and it hasn't been scaled larger or smaller? Well, there's two ways to do this, either in the control bar or in the links panel. If you have your control bar active, you can select your image container. You have to unlock your layer where the die line is. Select your image container and double click. You will then be able to go ahead and select your actual placed file, which in this case is the die line. In your properties panel, if the percentage is not 100%, that means that your die line is not placed at the correct size. Simply make sure that these both say 100% and then you can be guaranteed that your die line is the actual size. The other way that you can do this is you go into your window menu and call up your links panel. In your links panel, you can go and see whether or not your files have been scaled larger or smaller. Now, this doesn't show up as a default, so if you go into the links panel drop down menu, go down to the bottom with your panel options. One of the things that you can 
choose from the list of many different items that you can show in your links panel here is the scale. And if you click the scale and then click OK, this will allow you to show the scale of your items right here. Scale of your items right here. And you may want to open that up to see the scale of your items. If you click on your item, the scale should show up right underneath here. Here, because these are not scaled any larger or smaller than normal, nothing shows up. But if I were to go in and I were to scale my image or have placed it randomly, it will go in if I were to have gone in and placed this engine if I were to have gone in and placed this die line and I would have scaled it disproportionately or at the wrong size, here in my links panel, it will tell me that this is not 100% width and height. What's even worse with this is that I have placed it or I've tweaked this so that the width is actually wider than the height. That's not a good idea. Now I can't fix this in the links panel but I can go back to my control bar and I can set one of the settings to 100% and click return, which will then turn both the width and the height back to 100%. And then in my links panel, it won't show me any concern here that it is scaled at anything other than 100%. This is very important. If you go into your links panel and you have chosen your panel options and you have chosen to choose scale and show the scale here, you definitely want to see that. If you see numbers here that are not 100%, that is a dead giveaway that you have placed your file at the wrong percentage. Make sure it's at 100%. And then you'll be all set.